Welcome to this holiday episode, New England Fine Living at Sugarwood, where we will be doing a few greenery arrangements with greens that I found last week and also using consignment items around the home. I'm setting three table displays to give you some ideas. We're going to watch a nighttime Christmas parade and I'm going to introduce you to Sugarwood's newest family member. I hope you enjoy. Do you remember the greens that I purchased in the last video? Well, I'm going to place them around the home and today I'm going to work on making some greens for over the federal mirror. And what I did is I simply took some of the cedar and I'm getting cedar that goes in two different directions and I'm going to attach them somewhat like wings. Now you could use twine, I'm using floral wire, and I'm just gonna attach the two ends together, and I'm okay if it's a little floppy because they're then going to be tucked over the back of the mirror. Now you might have a mirror you wanna put around the front and you might wanna do this a little neater, but I really don't care what this looks like visually because it's gonna be hidden by the eagle. And while I have this down, I'm gonna add a few more greens. I have some boxwood here. I have another type of cedar, and I'm gonna add these first, and then once it's up on the wall, I'll add a few more. I'll be able to tuck them in and just keep them there without wire. Once I put it together, I simply put it behind the mirror. The mirror is actually supporting it. And then I let it drape over the front a bit, nice and loose. And then I added a few more greens and then a bow. I used a little wired ribbon. And I'm gonna show you how to make this bow with one piece of ribbon, one wire, and one cut. I'll show you the finished product during the Christmas house tour. But I thought this would help you if you wanted to pull some greens from around the home or if you were out and about and wanted to purchase some and embellish a mirror. Now let's take that green bowl that I found consignment shopping and some of the greens and also the glass frogs that I purchased during one of my previous consignment shopping tours. I think I bought these glass frogs maybe September. I forget the date, it's in one of my past videos, but this is my first time unwrapping them and I'll be using them for the Christmas greens. And I shouldn't say them, I'm gonna be using just one. When I purchased these, I was purchasing them for their particular size. The larger ones I know would fit inside some of my candle holders that I also use for flowers. 
and the smaller ones I do have some vases that I believe they will fit into so this was a find that um, I felt very lucky to come across I'm going to move these faux greens aside. I actually use them after I make the arrangement just to tuck underneath to fill it and fluff it a bit. I could have left it there before but I didn't want to work around it. If you remember this bowl did have a chip at the bottom but I wasn't even sure if this was watertight so I ended up putting in a casserole dish of all things with some water and I'm going to put one of the larger frogs right in the middle and start adding some stems that I'm giving yet another fresh cut to the end and I'm going to start layering these in so that they're draping over the edge I'm going to add my height and see what height I do want to go for and remember this is supposed to be fun I'm going to cut these by eye to a length that I think that I want for the height and width of this arrangement but you'll see later in the video that I do go back, take a few out, trim them down. I always err on going longer versus shorter when I'm starting an arrangement because I can always go back and trim it down if I like. So I'm just going to speed this up a bit. I'm going to first go in with my boxwood, go around, and then I'm going to start adding other layers of greens. Now I'm going to add a bit more cedar and let it just flow over the edges once again. And this is one of those that I will definitely be trimming when I see some of them are just too long for my liking. This is just like the kissing ball. Don't get discouraged if it's looking a little wonky and not quite right. I promise the more you add greens, the more you work on it, stand back, look at it, adjust it. If you make one of these, it will come out beautiful. Now let's add some of that white pine and pine cones that the storm brought down. Unfortunately, this white pine is quite sappy, so at one point I have very sticky fingers. So if you do use a pine like this, you might want to put uh, some parchment paper or something on your table to work from. A few sprigs of holly for a pop of red and some more texture within this arrangement. Let me show you a few table settings that I pulled together. Super quick, super easy, things I had around the home, and these are incomplete. I want to just show you some ideas, give you some inspiration, but normally you would probably put down a tablecloth, 
placemats, things like that. But what I have here is the poinsettias that are on the table were from a garland that I had. I didn't like them on the garland. I took them off and I saved them in last year's Christmas box. And today I put them on this table and I wrapped them around the cloth napkins. I have the silver centerpiece here that I purchased on the consignment store shopping, which was Reed and Barton. I have silver candle holders that I also found last year during a consignment shopping find. These bullion cups I purchased last year during consignment shopping. The red plates are from my childhood. My mother used to serve Christmas dinner on these. And then I have plastic chargers. They look like pewter, but they are plastic. I think I found these at Home Goods uh, several years ago. I just put in some red ornaments that I had in a bin next to me while I was setting up this table. And let's see else here. These glasses, those were also a consignment find. I purchased those when we remodeled the kitchen at Groton House. And I just thought this looked really pretty with the red, white, and silver theme. I literally put this table together in minutes because everything was at hand in my cabinets and cupboards right next to the dining room. Let's go back to the place setting again. I have the soup bowls here, my napkins, and my serving utensils. And I'm going to do a little more casual look. I cleared the table. Now I'm going to go grab some of the iron stone I have because I'm going to have, let's say, a party with just a luncheon serving a soup. So I went in and I got the large terrine that I had in the kitchen. I also grabbed some of my iron stone pieces and the pewter napkin rings that I just purchased. And I created a little bow with the napkin ring by folding the napkin in a lengthwise rectangle. And I just folded the ends under and tucked it into the ring to make a bow. I did this on a table at a Christmas tour in Concord. My friend who was helping me set up actually created these bows for that table and I just loved how simple but how beautiful it was. I forgot the little set of four salt and pepper shakers I also found while out shopping, thrift store consignment shopping last month for Thanksgiving and they're now going to adorn our Christmas table. This is most likely the table that I'll keep set up and add to for the Christmas home tour so that I can empty the dining room table and work on my Christmas cards by the fireplace. But here is the Royal Staffordshire that I had from a last year's consignment purchase. I found a set of 12 of these which I thought was a fantastic find. Unfortunately the plates are a little small when you're feeding grown men who are very hungry and they want to take a lot on their plates. Here are the gold pears that I found while out consignment shopping. All of my glassware, they are crystal, but I also found these while out and about over the past year or two. And the greenery floral arrangement that we made in a previous video. I really like how it came out and it is nice and fresh still in its water with its fresh cut stems. I even like this setup without a tablecloth because the natural wood tones pick up the brown of the plates, but you can almost envision it with a tablecloth as well. For Christmas Day, we are hosting lunch for family. Now, since we're doing it on actual Christmas Day, our children are dispersed to other family members, to boyfriend and girlfriend's homes. So we're going to have a smaller group and then we'll have other smaller gatherings around Christmas. And this table will most likely be changed for that. I'll set it for probably eight and I'll use some different tableware for that. But I really like how this looks and I'm hoping to have a gathering that people with smaller appetites will appreciate the smaller plates. I thought I would give you a little battery operated candle update. I still love them, but I did just have to change out the batteries. The one here on the left is the new battery. 
The one on the right is from the battery. I've had it in about two months and we do turn them on, I would say, six to seven hours a night. So we got quite a bit from it. Now, yes, the batteries do add up, but to not have cords all over the house or all the electricity that's being used, I'm okay with that. Here's my DIY for an easy but elegant bow. Let me share how I make this bow. Now, bows are my nemesis and I can make them and I usually use wired ribbons so that I can manipulate them to look even prettier from afar. But this way I have found is fairly easy. So let me show you what I do. I first make a loop and think of it if you're making a paper chain as a kid, you're gonna loop over a little bit extra so that you can hold it with your fingers. Sometimes I pinch it like this is a very thick ribbon and it's wide so I'm just pinching it there. You can see the little extra tab inside. And then you wanna make sure that all of your outside ribbon is the same, so I'm gonna twist it and then wrap. Once again, I've got the velvet on the outside. I have another ribbon that I tried earlier to show you, but I really think um, this thick velvet ribbon will be a bit easier to see. I'm twisting it and then I'm gonna make a loop. And this way you can pretty much see if the loops are the same size. Now at this point, if you wanna just have two loops, you would loop this up, attach, and then cut right there at the bottom. But I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna twist and then bring it up again. And I'm holding it there with my fingers on the inside of that loop. I'm never letting go inside that center loop area or else my whole bow would fall apart. I'm gonna give one twist and I'm looping around, grabbing it with my fingers in the back. And I'm trying to see if all my, my loops there are the same width. Another twist and then loop under. Another twist. It's giving me a little bit of a problem here. And loop under. Now I'm going to stop with this, the three loops on each side. And then I'm going to create one large loop with my hanging tail there, attach it, and then I'm going to cut that long tail in the middle, which will give me the longer ribbons of my bow. I had a little bit extra ribbon here. I had about five yards if I was to use my arms as length. So when I bring this up to the center, I do have still about a yard hanging. So if I had done this with just four yards, I wouldn't have to cut this one little extra piece that's hanging, but that's okay. I wanted to see what size bow I wanted. So I can actually, and I did use that little tail extra for something else. You could even cut it in half and make four tails hanging from this bow. So right now I'm just gonna put the wire inside the bow and I'm gonna spin it and make it really tight. At this point, you wanna make sure that little tiny overlap is grabbed inside of the loop and that you have all of the pieces in there just to hold your bow together tightly. And you don't have to spin it like I did. You can just twist the back. Um, have fun with trying to make a bow and if it doesn't work out the first time, try again. Now that I have it secure, I'm gonna get rid of that extra hanging piece. And like I said, I could add that so I have four tails hanging but I'm just gonna fluff up, fluff up my bow now. And here is my larger loop. I'm going to cut it, make it my two tails. And for this one, I'm just gonna do my angled cuts and I'll show you in a minute how I do my fishtail cuts on a different ribbon. You need some really good scissors. This ribbon actually has like a beaded edge, so I have my heavy duty cutting scissors here. So I'm just starting at my outer corner and going upward, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And once I'm done, I'm just gonna give it a bit of fluffing, adjust my loops, and it's ready to be adorned onto a piece of furniture, a gift, a wreath, a sled, whatever I choose to put it on.
I'm going to speed this one up. This ribbon gave me a little bit of a hassle because it kept folding upon itself. It does have a wired edge, but it was fighting me the whole time. And yes, glitter was getting everywhere. So that made it enjoyable. Now, with some of the ribbons, um, you don't want to use anything that's too flimsy doing this procedure. You know, a silk ribbon, a taffeta ribbon, it would just get a little bit floppy. You know, I would say from a grosgrain ribbon that has a little bit of weight and texture to it, all the way up to the, the wired edges would be a really good one. You could even probably get away with some felt ones if it wasn't too floppy. But I wanted to show you how I did my fishtail ends here. All you do is you take your ribbon and you're going to fold it so that the outside of the ribbon is on the outside. And then, I'm trying to, f with my dyslexia here, you're going to take it so that your scissors are angled from the bottom and going up using the outside edges because if you cut it one way you'll have a point that's going downward versus the open point going upwards if that makes sense. Like I said, this one, it was a little bit thinner in scale. I probably would have liked it with another loop or two on each side. But I was able to make up quite a few bows quickly that I'll be able to adorn on some Christmas packages and items around the house. Ben and I are really starting to enjoy some of the small town activities that are happening. We arrived early to get a space to watch the very first Fire and Ice nighttime parade here. And I'm going to make a little turn here. I want to show you this is the oldest meeting house in New Hampshire. And on this very night, I signed a form to start volunteering to help raise funds to fix the meeting house. It needs a lot of work, but something like that is important to me. So what I'm gonna do now is wait for nighttime and we're gonna enjoy this parade of lights put on by the local fire department. Hey, somebody's running a little bit late. I did wanna also say that other fire departments also got involved with this. So it was quite a long parade and it was very cold and they are walking, a lot of the children here are walking more than a mile to get to the final destination. But here we go.
Here's an old fire truck that was tucked away in the garage at the Historic Society and somebody had a little bit of fun with Christmas lights. The parade was going to our local park where there were vendors and they're going to have a bonfire. Once again, it was a night for all. Ben and I didn't hang around for the bonfire because um, I was a little too cold. I wasn't dressed properly, but next year things will change and who knows, we might even join the parade. Let me show you what we might be driving. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to the new family member of Sugarwood. Ben bought a new old girl, a 1949 F1 Ford and he has been wanting another truck for quite a while. I'm going to show you a truck that he used to have in just a moment. He drove it in high school. I've known Ben since I was 12. He drove this in high school. It is now my stepson's truck. I even put a Christmas tree in it a few years back. I'm thinking Willow and I are going to be a bit jealous because I think somebody's going to be getting a little bit more attention than we are. so smooth. 